Colorado's first no-one case under the red flag law is working its way through the courts. The case actually started December 29th with the domestic violence investigation between a man in Denver and his wife. The man turned over his guns to police. Police have yet to return them. The man now is a hearing in two weeks. We're going to learn more about this law. We've got 9 News legal analyst Whitney Trailer. He's here to talk about this. This is the statute. You brought this in. Yeah. What, 26 pages here? 26 pages. That's the new law, the red flag. And it's, and it's, it, it's good that it's that long, though, because it identifies and gives a lot of the procedures and, and really breaks down the law well. Let's talk about this first yeah. case that we have in front of us. What, what are your thoughts on it right now? Well, the first case is actually, I don't think it's going to be contested. This was a situation, as you uh, indicated, in which uh, a man was accused of domestic violence. The wife had called, called him in, um, and the police came, and he voluntarily gave his, his weapons. Um, but now, under the domestic violence law, and so now, the, instead of returning them, the police petitioned under the red flag law to keep the weapons. And this is where, you know, and, and, and I think talking about what the procedure in the law is relevant now, but, but nonetheless, they, they, uh, they petitioned and the court granted the ex parte. They said, yes, you can keep the guns, but there's now a hearing on the 16th to determine if it will be um, for a long term, 364 days. Right. But the man whose uh, guns were confiscated, he actually said, I was going to uh, essentially harm myself. I'm glad that you, you all took the guns. Right. So under this law, what, are yeah. law, what is law enforcement allowed to do? So under this law, if, the, if somebody petitions, it can be a family member or a law enforcement that says, look, this person's going to uh, harm themselves or someone else, they can come in and take their weapons. Now, the procedurally, it's important what happens on, on the procedure side. So first, they can go in and say to the judge, uh, we think this person is going to hurt themselves. The if they prove to the judge by a s clear and convincing evidence that they are with a sworn affidavit and all this, then the judge will issue the order and give that to the sheriff to then go and get the weapons. Once they get the weapons, there, there'll be another hearing within 14 days where the person can appear themselves and then contest it. So it's, it's the initial hearing is without the, the person, and then the second hearing is with the person. We've mm -hmm. got about a minute left. I want to get to this sanctuary uh, cities. cities that are yeah. they're not refusing to in enforce this law. Right. Uh, one of them specifically, Weld County, is, is said the, the sheriff there, I'm not going to enforce this law. I'll end up in my own jail before I do that. Yeah. What are some of the legal requirements there? I mean, this we could see this definitely, uh, definitely take a different course here in the next... I mean, we're only five days into the new year. Right. Well, there's going to be some litigation. If a, sh if a court orders a sheriff to um, confiscate someone's guns under these laws and the sheriff refuses to, that sheriff would essentially be in contempt. And uh, Attorney General, General uh, Phil Weiser talked about this and said, um, we're going to try and educate people because this is going to save people's lives is what they think. So the issue is, will they be in contempt? And this really also comes down to the notion of preemption, which is under the Supremacy Clause. State law essentially overrides these local laws. Sure. So, um, so they should have to enforce it. But real quickly, I looked at Commerce City this morning, their sanctuary city, and although they declared themselves a sanctuary city, they said, we're not directing any employee to violate the law or a court order. Mm -hmm. So I think it's almost in symbolism that they're a sanctuary city because if a court orders them, the, the sanctuary city is saying, hey, don't violate the court order. Definitely lots to talk about. This is not the end of the story. Whitney, thank you so much for coming sure. in. Good We've got the prep rally coming up next with Ariel.